Fee, is that the is that our one hundredth and first anniversary cake? <laughs> no, it's it was. A pizza, it, it's a piece of pizza, and I uh, forgot again. Well, it's a it's pie. Hundred. It's the hundred and first pizza party. It's a it's a pie. It, that counts. I as... swear. I swear. At some point, I'm gonna get a cake, and we're gonna bring it on. <laughs> and it, whatever episode it'll be, that's what it'll be. What? Yeah, the hundred and seventh episode. episode party. One oh eight. Can we talk before we start this show? Can we talk about the diabolical team? that Dutton and I are in fantasy for 27 years. We never knew that Dutton and I could manipulate the system the way that we do, but we're evil. We traded Dutton. Tell him the trade. We traded Devonte Adams and anybody else or just Devonte. Oh, and Dak Prescott for Jordan love. And who did we also get? Xavier worthy. Xavier worthy. Dak Prescott wow. had one point. And the guy that got Devonte Adams also has Garrett Williams, so now he's—I mean Garrett Wilson. Wilson. So Garrett now Wilson. he's totally screwed. Oh, uh, that wow! We, we, we had to pull one over on somebody, huh? And we scored 180 points this week, just about right. Yeah, sounds like you're no, ki- sounds did. like you're killing it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, ever, ever since everyone's, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it more on this week's Three and Out. Welcome back to the 101st episode of the Three and Out podcast. I'm your host, Wayne Cavati, and uh, still not on the injured reserve are the two best co-hosts in fantasy football. Give it up for Mike the Professor Dutton and Chris Fanduel Fee. Fee Amato Fee, Saquon Barkley returns this week. What are you feeling over there? Are you on mute? <laughs> oh. No. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling terrible about it. I um I think that he's going to go absolutely bananas, and uh, we'll talk about it here coming up soon. Oh yeah, okay, very good. It's on the list. Dutton down there in North Carolina, how's things going? Uh, it's all right. It got cold. Did it get cold down by you? It got cold today. I don't know. You where. see the hat? Yeah, we're both wearing hats. Fees up there in New York, and we're the ones in winter hats and such. I, I mean, it's it's cold it's here, but, but I, here. I don't need a hat yet. Yeah, my yeah. ears are cold. My lips, I got I got the chapstick here in case I need it during the show. Yeah, uh, I'm outside and I had to, you know, make sure I had the hat on and the extra sweatshirt. It's a little cold out tonight, not going to lie. But, you know, it's football weather, so let's get to it. Yeah, let's get to it. I want to start. So this week on, on our roster base, we I didn't it's get It's a great one. one. <laughs> I didn't, we didn't get one of our friends because I saw this on the Instagram. And it was <laughs> on the ESPN Bet Instagram page. And what we have to talk about is if you wanna if you wanna follow along at home, listeners, go to ESPN Bet one word <laughs> on Instagram and you'll see this uh lineup this week. It's from a team called the Jack Attack. And just so you know, before we even start, it is a full roster and it's not a terrible roster. No, it's we not. We didn't just... forget to start anyone, no one's on buy, no one's injured. Nope. But this is how his team worked out. He had Dak, Dak they, Scott at quarter. Okay. Hold on. They, Go ahead. they weren't injured to start with. Right, right. right. They Some were all ready injured. to play. Right. <laughs> so we got Dak Prescott at quarterback, Ezekiel Elliott, Elliott at running back, Travis Etienne at running back, Chris Olave at wide receiver, Calvin Ridley at wide receiver, Dallas Goddard at tight end, Marvis Harris, Marvin Harrison Jr. at a flex, the Dallas defense and Bass at kicker. And as Fee said, half the people got hurt. This team <laughs> scored 1.22 points in fantasy How many, football. Wayne, tell the listeners how many of his players had negative points. Yeah, Travis Etienne had zero, minus 0. 0.1 points. Chris Olave had minus 0. 0.5 points. <laughs> and the Dallas Cowboys defense had minus 7 points. <laughs> Guys, what? What is, this poor guy is now an internet meme for the rest of his fantasy football life because the nerds like us are always here's the good news. Here's the, the good news. I did, and the re- reason I wore the Bayside High School is because this guy's team's name is the Jack Attack, and it's a, obviously a ripoff of the Zach Attack. So, in honor of you, Jack Attack, if you're listening, uh, who goes to you Jack Attack because you're in first place in your league. I did some internet research, and he is oh, yeah? in first place in his league. So despite scoring one point this past weekend, he is still in first place. Um, that being said, I 
would have loved to have been on that text thread. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> wait, you scored one point. Like, how is your phone not blowing up from your friends? And how are you just not at some point being like, you know what? I'm going for the record for least amount of points ever. Because is it that like you can't do anything once you set your lineup, right? Like he set the lineup, like yeah. and it was a decent lineup right. going into Sunday. <laughs> Uh, I remember in our league. Uh, sorry if you're listening to to make this happen. Taco scored 18 points one game, and <laughs> I had been at the bar, you know, having like a little few drinks. And when I opened the app and I saw that he had 18 points with a little buzz on, I remember being in tears, crying, laughing <laughs> as hard as I could that someone scored 18 points. This guy scored 17 fewer points than that. 17. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Jack Attack, kudos to you, man. Uh, kudos to you, hope Jack you stay Attack. in first place. You're definitely gonna have a bounce back next week because you can't go any lower than that. You can score five points and have you, you've done five times better than you did this week, right? Uh, if he scores 80 points, which is not a lot in fantasy football, no. right? If he scores 80 points, he increased his point total by 79 points in one week. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, Man, we had to talk about that. Next week, we'll get another friend's roster on here. But, man, that one was too good to pass up. We had, we had to do that. Uh, so now that we did that, that means we can move on to everybody's favorite segment. And it's first down, buy it or bullshit. Um, let's just get right to it because there is a lot of news this week. Obviously, there was huge trades. So we'll start with the biggest. And that's Cam Akers going from the Houston Texans <laughs> back to the Minnesota Vikings for a second time. Uh, oh, there were bigger trades than that? My, my oh, fault. Okay. No. All right. Let's talk about the Devontae Adams trade. Uh, obviously, we knew he was probably never going to play another snap for the Raiders again. He was going to have this injury that it already looks like he could play this week when he's fully healthy now flying across the country. But that's not my question. My question, Fee, we'll start with you. Buy it or BS? Aaron Rodgers is now a must start every week for the rest of the season. No, no, uh, not yet. Uh, I need to see it first. I know what they have together, but Aaron Rodgers has not looked good, nor has the Jets offense. And yes, getting uh, 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 an excellent wide receiver, who, by the way, is also 31 years old, um, to join up with them doesn't necessarily make them some sort of offensive juggernaut. Now, they have tons of weapons in place to become one, but I think it's going to take a few weeks. So, a must start, definitely not. Um, maybe uh, in a few weeks after we see what they have, you know, potentially. But um, you know, they still have offensive line problems, and I'll let Dutton talk about that. Go, go, Dutton. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys can see it in the spreadsheet I wrote. Is Devonte Adams blocking? Because if he, if if they traded for him to become this secret offensive lineman that we never knew Devontae <laughs> Adams had in him, then kudos to you, Jets, for pulling a fast one on all of us. But they didn't. They traded for him to catch passes and touchdowns from his best friend Aaron. And, B, you said it. I mean, the Bills' defense is good. They're not great. They're banged up. And, man, Aaron Rodgers ate the turf a lot on Monday night. A lot. He was hit a lot. There was twice he was hit. I was like, whoa, I can't believe you got up from that on blind side, like, you know, tackles. Like, so, yes, the Jets' offense in terms of, like, ooh, lots of weapons, lots of fun gadgets, yeah, that's fun, but I don't know. I just don't think it helps them because he's not blocking. And until you shore up that offensive line, and Aaron Rodgers is not mobile. We're, nobody's talking about that enough. Like, he is not mobile in the pocket. Like he has become a statue. Like he is not going to try to run. He is not going to like, he can't. Yeah, he can. And he, he's got this ankle injury or whatever. And every week he's going to get hurt. Cause every week he's going to get hit harder and harder. I mean, Dude, so he's yeah, 40. I, mean, I get out of bed and I'm in more pain than that guy is. Right. I'm going to play what's it called devil's advocate or, you know, just be the contrarian here, but I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers is a must start. And here's why. Yes, the Steelers are a tough defense, but I'm going all in right now and seeing what he's made of. I don't know that he'll have a great week this week, but how about after the Steelers? He goes the Patriots, the Texans, who have a lethal pass rush. Don't get me wrong, 
but they have also allowed 11 passing touchdowns this year. They, If you can get past the pass rush, and they can with those weapons, then you go the Cardinals, the Colts, the Seahawks, the Dolphins who are, if they can keep the offense, I mean the defense off the field, they'll be better. The Jaguars, the Rams, and the Bills. Okay, not one. He obviously did well enough against the Bills, even though he spent a lot of time on his back. He still got fantasy points. Uh, so I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying if you have better option this week, sure. If you are, if you're a team that somehow got a better option than Aaron Rodgers drafting, maybe this is the week to do it. But after that, start him. And and the juicy schedule is with those two elite wide receivers and a running back that could is one of the best receiving running backs. I, I'm all in. So I, I would start him moving forward. Let's talk about the other big trade, and that is Amari Super Cooper Dupa uh, going to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Dutton, buy it or BS, Amari Cooper, 400 targets incoming this week. <laughs> All right, what week are we in? We, we're in week seven? Yeah. Yep. The Bills haven't had their bye yet, so they have 10 games left. Yeah. And he's going to average 12 to 15. He's going to have 150 targets as a bill. I guarantee you. Just as a bill. <laughs> Just as a bill. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Pete. No, I, was, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, it's going to be massive for Josh Allen and the Bills offense. Uh, and yeah, he's going to get a ton of looks every week. And if he actually really does average between 10 and 12 targets a week, I mean, he could catch, you know, six, seven, eight balls a week and maybe drop like another six or seven, right? That's, <laughs> isn't, isn't that what he does? <laughs> so <laughs> I think it makes going really quick, though. I think it makes the other Bills wide receivers better. And in turn, because of that, makes Josh Allen better. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, I agree. I agree. We're going to yeah. talk a little bit about that in a little bit when we get to the buy, sell, trade, uh, buy, sell, hold. But I will say this, as much as I love to rip on Josh Allen, you have, you guys obviously know I think he's good. And he made Gabe Davis look good. Okay? Amari um, Cooper has always been a target machine. Like, even in Cleveland, when Deshaun Watson can't even figure out how to throw a football five yards, he had – these were his last five games. Ten targets, eight targets, 12 targets, eight targets, nine targets. Now, granted, Deshaun Watson's throwing the ball, so half of them were landing on his shoes. So, you know, he's <laughs> probably going to get a better chance to catch a majority of those targets. So I think I think I'm think i going with both what you're saying. I, I bet you Cooper finishes a top 10 wide receiver from here on out in fantasy, like for the last oh, – Every week? Absolutely. Yeah. Every week he's a top I believe 10. That. Yeah, so that's where I am on him. And I traded him to Dwayne, so you're welcome, Dwayne. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus. Uh, uh, my brother, no, no. shout out to Jonathan, uh, sent me an article this week and he said facts. And it was an article from CBS Sports Line that said in an interview, D'Amico Ryans said in preparing for Jordan Love, he will be the best quarterback they face all season. Of course, they did face the Buffalo Bills and the aforementioned Josh Allen, who I like to rip on. So I want to take the opportunity to do so here. Fee, buy it or BS. D'Amico Ryans is right, and Jordan Love is the best quarterback they have to face. Yeah, I'm I'm buying that. Uh, Jordan Love is the better quarterback with a better team right now. He's got better weapons around him. You know, not, granted, not you know the Amari Cooper thing, notwithstanding. Um, but Jordan Love has better weapons around him. He has a better offensive line, and he has a better kind of team going. Um, we've all seen what Jordan Love has been able to do, and when he ha when he's not hurt. Uh, he's been fantastic. And I think right now, Jordan Love is the better quarterback. Done. The way I went about answering this question was trying to make a trade, right? Put Jordan Love on the Bills, put Josh Allen on the Packers. No. I don't, to be honest, I don't think much changes. I don't. I think both teams are exactly what they are, right? So in that sense... Yeah, I think it's a little bit scarier playing Jordan Love because I think there's more weapons on the Packers, like Fee alluded to, but I don't know. I don't think he's the best. Like, yes, the Packers all around might be a better offensive team than the Bills, but I think if you put Josh Allen on the Packers, he'd be pretty scared playing the Packers and Josh Allen. Fair, fair. Um, I mean, you guys know my answer. I don't need to give my answer. If we're, yeah, right. Jordan Love's better than Josh Allen. Uh, 
So we're going to let's talk about the other part of this Devonte Adams trade. And the question I have to ask to you, gentlemen, and I I like uh, I, I think um, Fee and I are going to be split and we'll, we'll talk about it here. But Dutton, we're going to start with you. Buy it or BS. It's time to be a little bit worried about Brock Bowers without knowing that Devonte Adams won't be in that lineup. Yeah, I mean, I think it's there's a, a couple of reasons to that. Devontae's not there, so defenses aren't going to have to scheme for him. And the quarterback play has not gotten any better, and it's actually progressively gotten worse from week to week in Las Vegas, right? So I think that might hinder Brock Bowers. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. He, I mean, he started the season great. He's been off to a great start. But, yes, I think it will get more difficult for him to find open space. Hey. All right, here's why, here's why you're wrong. Uh, in week five and in week six, um, without Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers has had <clears throat> 12 targets and 10 targets, eight catches and nine catches, 97 yards and a touchdown, 71 yards, no touchdowns, 23 points, 16 points. No Devontae Adams, no problem. I think this only helps uh, uh, Brock Bowers. Uh, I think it it gives him more targets. He's been getting more targets without Devontae Adams in the lineup, and I think that that continues um, no matter who their quarterback is. So I do agree with you, Fee. Like for, for, okay, I have him in one league. I'm not benching him. But I am worried, and I'm going to tell you why I'm a little bit worried. Devontae Adams not being there is part of the problem. But so is the fact that they went to Aiden O'Connell. Okay, football reference has this stat that measures accuracy, and it's called, very brilliantly, on-target percentage. It takes a percentage of how much you hit your target. You They know where you're going to throw it and how much you hit it. We were making fun of Deshaun Watson before, and he's one of the lower-end ones, and he is on target 69% of the time. Bryce Young, who lost his freaking job, was on target 68% of the time. So you understand where that is, you know, like where that line line is. Gents, I, I, I'll let either one of you guess what Aiden O'Connell's on target percentage has been. Just throw out a guess. 54. I was going to say 56. <laughs> why don't you, Fee, why don't you cut yours in half for me? Wow. <laughs> 28%. 28%. Percent Aiden O'Connell's on target <laughs> percentages. Okay. And I know he's only played a game and a half and then like a lower, another part of another one, but that is <laughs> bad. That's bad. So Maybe they go back to Gardner Minshew. I, I, first of all, that, that's a great thing because I was having this conversation. I don't understand how a coach that doesn't want to lose his job is not going back to Gardner Minshew. At least he could complete a pass, right? Like I'm not saying he's good, but at least he can complete a pass. Um, but yeah, they have no real running threat. I know we're going to talk about Alexander Madison soon. They have no other wide receiver threats. And I just feel like if the quarterback play doesn't improve, that's why I'm worried. You know, like they they he could get all the targets you want, but and defenses are going to start scheming for him more. Just now. scheming for him because that's all you got to take out of the game. Right. Um So yeah, that's why but I'm B, worried. Those are impressive numbers that you did bring to the table. Yeah, no, no. And I agree with you. I'm still starting him, but I'm worried about what could happen. I'm not saying I would ever bench him right now. Right. Yes. Sean Tucker. Done. Obviously, we'll start with you. Buy it or BS. Sean Tucker. That's it. That's all I'll say. Buy it or yeah, BS. I mean, Sean Tucker. <laughs> do you play him? I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, sure. Like, Fee has it. Bye week replacement. I mean, like, are the Bucks going to put up that many points again? I don't know. Like, I Maybe. think so. They are a fun I think team. so, too. And not just because they are my team, but they are a fun team to watch because they do. They score. sure are. Um, I want to see it more. I want to see what happens, Um, you know. But that being said, it is fun to have another weapon on your team. But, yeah, V. Yeah, Um. so this last game was kind of like a weird game where the bucks you know scored a ton of points there was a lot of a lot of back and forth going on it was kind of like a goofy type of game and i would say that this is most likely an outlier but even if he is that good i think this is still going to be a running back by committee they still have three running backs i know rashad white is hurt Bucky Irving is still is not going to go away by any means. He Bucky Irving is still a very good running back. 
And while Sean Tucker is more explosive, I think, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to get all the carries and he's going to all of a sudden have 20 touches a game. Um, could he replicate this? Sure, but it's not going to be every week. And which weeks are, are, are they going to be? Do we know? So I think yeah. like this could be a, a, maybe a bye week replacement, but I think in the end it's just going to kind of form a running back by committee and screw everybody that either has Bucky or guy to have on your team. He's a good guy to have on your team. If you have like that Monday, like this week is great because it's Monday night. And if you have like a running back who's questionable and you're like, mm, well, I know he's there Monday night. I could always throw him in at the last minute, you know, like that'd be fun. So I think he's great for your team, Dutton, as in right. the Bucks. I think it's great for you that you have three capable backs to tote the ball. I think it's a nightmare for every fantasy owner that has one of them because nobody has two of them. Everyone has one of them, right? If you drafted Rashad White, you, Bucky Irving was drafted. You didn't draft him, right? And now everybody's picking up Sean, like Sean Taylor, Sean, Sean Tucker. Uh, so I just think it's a it's an absolute fantasy nightmare. Uh, and like Fee said, it's it's a full fledged running back by committee, like that you want nothing to do with that fantasy wise. Uh, Tom Brady also making headlines. He took Devontae Adams' spot. He's gonna he has what ten percent of the Raiders uh fee good or bad bite or bs it's it's good for the raiders we'll say uh i don't think it really matters one way or the other to be honest um i don't think that there's any way that the davises are giving up any kind of control of mm. that team to him i think this is more of just a a money investment for him and you know who knows maybe you know 10 20 years down the line that could change but right now i don't think that anything changes that yeah, so it's 5%. It's not even 10, it's 5. Oh, it's 5. And, yeah, and like, I'm with V. Like, the Davises, they're not giving up control of that team. Um, the bigger question is, is what happens to Brady now with Fox? Like, you know, like, he can't go to production meetings. He can't badmouth officials. He can't question yeah. a call. Like, I mean, all of that is important to your job that you're supposed to be it's doing. Interesting. You know? Yeah. So. Well, here's my question. Do we all agree that Tom Brady would be on target more than 30% of the time? Does he just, <laughs> does he just sign himself? Is that the next move here? Cause I promise you, he ain't throwing 28% on target percentage. He just uh, has to not get sacked at all. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I just think it's it's a it was weird timing. Yet, like you said, he's he's having this go as a fox. I mean, he's been getting a lot of beef about it. Maybe he's hearing rumblings that they're going to ask him to leave. So he's like, well, let me find a second retirement plan here. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, they talked about it. I mean, this was they knew this going into this right beginning of this season. There was already talk about what happens if Brady gets control of this. You know, becomes part of the Raiders ownership group and how they're going to handle it. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And yeah, like, you know, he's not very good at it. So I don't know if he. I mean, I'm just being honest. There's a lot of people who agree with me. He's not very. I don't know. He he doesn't bring the juice like Tony Romo out the gate. That's for sure. I see. I only have red zone. So I, yes, I've heard Tom Brady talk about right. like clips, you know, yeah. like you don't get to sit there and listen to him talk about the game because it jumps to the next thing. Right. Uh, but yeah. So, okay. I threw this one in there after we did the sheet. I hope you guys saw it, but it sounds like Russell Wilson may be the starter this week in Pittsburgh. He is practicing in full. He was taking first team reps. Tomlin said he's leaning more towards it than he has in the past. <clears throat> Uh, B, buy it or BS, it's the right move to give to go with Russell Wilson. No, it's not the right move. Um, Justin Fields has gotten you to four and two. While Justin Fields is not like some world beating quarterback, he's gotten you to four and two. He's kind of stayed the course, right, with the, with the with the Steelers and their ship. And I think you got to stick with him, especially because what he's still twenty three years old. Yeah. He's still a super young guy. And, you know, Tomlin, I feel like, can mold him into whatever he wants to mold him into. Um, and he's still a, a halfway decent quarterback who, who can run the ball a whole lot, which is great for fantasy. Um, Russ is old. Uh, Russ has proven that he has not been able to kind of get that magic back that he had uh, in Seattle all those years. You know, Denver was kind of a disaster. 
for him. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't think that this is a really good move at all, uh, especially I get behind the Pittsburgh offensive line, which is terrible. Justin Fields can get away from all of that. Russell Wilson's old. I don't, yeah. I, he, I don't know. He can move the way he used to anymore. Dutton. I have a theory. I think they're using this as trade material so that they can trade one of them. You know, some team is going to see Russell Wilson play on Sunday night and offer Pittsburgh, you know, maybe the Dolphins finally come to their senses and like, hey, we'll trade for one of your quarterbacks. Um, so that's my theory behind it. Because other than that, I don't understand what the Steelers are doing. This is very unlike the Steelers, right? The Steelers are a consistent organization who, you know, like we've talked about before, they've had two coaches our lifetime. So, yeah. like, you know, yeah. like, so this is weird that the Steelers are having a quarterback controversy, the whole thing. So I think there's an alternative motive behind this and i think it's to possibly be able to trade one of them well i mean here's the thing too like i get justin fields is playing but you said it he he's a he's a decent right like he is not lighting the world on fire he still looks to run way too much like he does not do all his check downs and run right he doesn't read all his routes like you could tell he's just like oh boy i'm and he's got go. and it's not a designed run it's time, just time to go yeah, he's like, I'm out of here. Like, snap. Oh, they're coming. Got to go. <laughs> and I think Tomlin likes – I mean, Tomlin likes a running offense, but he likes to have that stability of, like, at least set your feet and let's figure something out here, you know? Um, I don't know. I think they did trade for Russell Wilson first to be the starter. He is finally healthy. I, I'm with you. I'm torn. I'm torn because it, Justin Fields has done a nice enough job to get to four and two, but – can Russell Wilson, Wilson with a little more experience maybe bring that edge out of the because Najee Harris has been on and off good. George Pickens is the same way, you know, like Free these guys, all of them, they up and down. Every yeah. Game. And it, a lot has to do with that line, which like, like Fee said, won't help do any favors for Russell Wilson. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, th I think. I, I would like to see Russell Wilson at least get one chance with with the Steelers and against the Jets. You know they can. It, it's not the easiest task, right? That's who they play Sunday night. So I don't know. All right, I had fun doing it last week from uh, the suggestion from longtime listener Anthony. Uh, so let's welcome back Kid Robots Buy, Sell, and Hold. This is a little segment where I ask these two uh, what they think about kind of people that are hot right now and what you do with them as the trade deadline approaches. So I got it. I got an interesting take here. Uh, Fee, we'll start with you. Caleb Williams, non keeper league. Obviously, if it's a keeper league, he's not going anywhere. Non keeper league, Caleb Williams, buy, sell, or hold. Well, I think non keeper league or not, I think he's a hold just because he has looked really good recently. And there's no reason to think that he won't continue to be at least halfway decent um, with all those weapons. Keenan Allen's back from injury. Uh, Adunze's back from injury. You still got DJ Moore. Uh, that offense is is pretty good. And uh, there's no reason to think that Caleb Williams is going to take any kind of steps backwards. Uh, I think he's still a solid quarterback, and you probably should hold him. Cotton? Yeah, I would say hold him. Unless somebody's come out, coming to you and saying, hey – I'll trade you Caleb uh, Williams. Uh, you know, you have Caleb Williams. I'll want him and I'll give you Jordan Love or I'll give you, you know, I don't even know, Josh Allen maybe? Like, you know, like, yeah, like, why would you trade him? He's too good to keep him on your team. So he's like throwing for like four touchdowns a game, right? Like he's he's red hot right now. But so I I wrote hmm on the spreadsheet because I can't decide. But I just wanted to bring the, this up, Okay. There are only nine teams in the NFL that have allowed 10 or more passing touchdowns this season. And over the last three weeks of this hot streak, Caleb Williams has played three of them. <laughs> okay. So that means a hundred percent of his games the past week have been through against 30% of the worst defenses in the NFL. Right. Okay. Right. Like this guy. So I don't know if I did math right there, but you, you get what I'm saying, but you know who he hasn't played the Vikings who he has to play twice. Yeah, the Lions, Packers. whose secondary has been pretty deadly, who he has to play twice. And then the Packers, who Dutton has been raving about their defense all season, and he hasn't played them yet. They had another game where they had at least a one turnover. Like, that's every game this year they've had a turnover. Like, yeah. Their defense. Like, it's, yeah. 
And that one guy had, didn't he have like five straight games with an interception? The one Xavier guy was, McKinney, yeah, he finally yeah. broke his record on. He finally stopped on Sunday, but they had like two or three fumble recoveries. Now I say all this because next week he plays the Commanders, and guess who's let up the most passing touchdowns in the NFL this year? Commanders, the Commanders. And then the week after that, he plays the Cardinals, who are one of the nine teams I mentioned that have allowed ten or more touchdowns. Right. So the next two weeks, he's going to be throwing three or four touchdowns a game. I promise you, he's a must start for the next two weeks. The way he's playing. And to Fee's point, weapons glory. You didn't even mention Cole Komet, who bounced back with his first huge game of the year. He finally showed up. He's Gronkowski. Cole Komet <laughs> is going to have a huge year. I'm serious. Like, what? Just it's going to keep going from here. So he has two more good weeks that you know. And then what happens the final weeks of the season when he's playing three of the best defenses over and over and over again? Uh, so, it, it and and the rookie wall usually hits around week 14. It's like, is this a good time to trade him? It's yeah, I was going to say, so what, what I'm hearing you tell me is to sell him. I think sell maybe high. Sell high. you sell really high. You have to go high. It's like Dutton said, you have to get, you better get, like, work some package for Brees Hall high, I'm saying. You know, like. I kind of wish, yeah. wish I had him now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if you're one of the uh, tens of tens of people that listen to this show and have Caleb Williams, do yourself some thinking. You might be able to, to make a, a heist right now. Um all right, let's move on to uh, – this one's going to be a tough one for me. Dalton Kincaid. Dalton, I see you say sell. Uh, I'm on the same page with you. I want to hear why. Uh, the addition of Amari Cooper, the two tight ends, I feel like the Bills – they're going to use their tight ends, but their tight ends are not going to be fantasy tight ends. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like their tight ends are going to catch three or four passes a game, yeah. maybe one's a touchdown, but you're not going after their either one, especially the Mari Cooper. Like I said, he's going to get 12 to 15 targets a game. So yeah. tight ends are already not getting a lot. So take some away from them. So yeah, sell. If you can sell them, sell them. B, you are the opposite. I am. And, and here's why. So I, I'm, I'm saying by Dalton Kincaid and, and there's a few reasons. Number one, he hasn't been good, not that he hasn't been good, but the Bills have, or Josh Allen, have not thrown him the ball much at all this year, which for fantasy has made him not good. That's not true, uh, though. And I'm going to tell you, well, I'll, I'll let you finish, and then I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, so so he hasn't gotten a lot of volume, is what I'm trying to say. And I think the addition of Amari Cooper should help him, maybe not volume-wise, but I think it should help him uh, as far as opening up the middle of the field. I think that it should give him higher valued targets uh, that he might be able to do more with, you know, if, if that makes sense. I just think that with Amari Cooper there, I think that should open up the offense a little bit more for him uh, and give him more of a chance to do more with the ball. And uh and I just think that if you were going to try to sell him right now, you're not going to get much back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, to, okay. So you are correct that he's not getting a ton of targets. Okay. What he, he has 31 targets and that's five a week at this point. So that's not a lot for the guy that everyone drafted like third or fourth tight end this year, right? Like you, that's the guy you want eight to 10 targets a game. But the thing is, even though he only has those 31 targets, the next closest Buffalo Bill on the team is 21 targets. Okay? So it's not a matter of Amari Cooper's there to steal targets because he's getting the most – he's Josh Allen's favorite guy. He's just not making anything about it. And then the more dangerous thing that you add on top of that is, as Dutton said, Knox is the end zone guy. Once they get in the five-yard line, they're not even looking at Kincaid. The guy has one touchdown this year. And then it's Dawson Knox, and Omari Cooper loves the end zone. So now you have two guys that are going to be taking the ball away from Kincaid. So, sure, like maybe Kincaid gets those five targets and he catches three of them for 60 yards, but you're not – I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to get – And think about it. You could put Dawson Knox, Dalton Kincaid as a double tight end with James Cook in the backfield and Omari Cooper as a wide receiver – and now defenses are like, whoa, right? And so they, they can block, they can run to the end zone. So, yeah, I mean, I just think – I don't think he's going to be getting much more than he's already getting, and he's not doing much with what he's getting already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. So, um, 
I'm telling you right now, I'm not I'm not trying to trade him, but I'm also can highly consider benching him. But we'll talk about that later in the show, and I'll, I'll get you guys' opinions on it. Uh, Devontae Adams' buddy now. What are you doing with Garrett Wilson, Fee? I'm holding him just because of his talent. Uh, I don't know what it's going to do. Well, I do know it, it should lessen his volume and his targets because Devontae Adams is definitely going to command a lot of that. But now Garrett Wilson almost becomes the number two there. And as good as he is, and as much attention as Devontae Adams is going to get, uh, that should really open things up for him. So I'm not selling him. Uh, you probably can't buy him. So I think you got to hold him. Yeah, Dutton. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's going to want to sell him to you. I think Blackstock would in our league because he's got Devontae Adams now. So well, that's, probably, true. that's true. Right. There could be a couple of leagues that that situation happened to that you're maybe you, you got the opportunity. Um, I would hold him. Here's what I think is going to happen. And who am I? But just this guy who lives in North Carolina who can't stay in the Jets. But I think Garrett Wilson is going to be fine until they get to the red zone and then that's when Devontae Adams is going to be the target he's just bigger and Aaron knows that he can throw that ball up there and it's a guarantee right like we saw it in Green Bay for how many years so that back I, the back shoulder throw and everything back else shoulder he's just gonna be yeah all day right so I think Garrett Wilson is gonna get the you know here's this seven yard pass do with it what you can here's this 30 yard you know you know, bomb from the 20 yard line to get us to midfield. But once they get inside the red zone, I think that's when Devontae Adams takes over. Yeah. Um, I'd buy him. Like I said, if you have that situation, because uh, to Fee's point, I, I do think, um, I think he's still going to have some opportunity. I do think you're right that he's definitely the red zone opportunities are going to be less and less, but I still think that look, there's off. We've seen offenses that could sustain two stud wide receivers and Aaron Rodgers if he could get three seconds to breathe is the quarterback that can sustain two wide receivers and get Tim Brown and Jerry Rice played together and they had Rich Gannon, Randy Moss and Chris Carter. They both were thousand yard, 15 touchdown guys constantly, you know, Torrey Holton, uh, Isaac Bruce, Isaac Bruce, yep. Uh, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison. Yeah. There's we could Mark Duper and Mark Clayton. How do you forget those guys? Those guys are great. So there's plenty of examples. If the quarterback can have three, three seconds to throw a ball and is capable um fee got to start with you on this one your boy tyrone tracy what are we doing with him uh i'm holding him um i don't trust singletary tyrone tracy has looked really good uh he's a three down back you know i don't i'm not sure what they're going to do when singletary comes back but um he does seem to get banged up uh pretty often so i think tyrone tracy is a hold done uh, I'm buying him. Try to get him. You can probably get him still pretty cheap right now because people are going to think, oh, it's a one-week thing. But I think he becomes a mainstay in that backfield. So buy him if you can. Well, I have him, and I ain't selling him. So you're not going to be able to buy him from me. I'm holding him. I'm going to tell you why. Remember, Devin Singletary last year came to the Texans, and don't forget that for the first two games, Damian Pierce was still the starter, right? And Devin Singletary wasn't – so Devin Singletary was kind of the starter by default because all these other guys are rookies and and Eric Gray, you know, it's like, and now why not? Like Trey, we know who Singletary is and Singletary is a nice change of pace back. He's a good back, but Tracy looks like he's the real deal. And I love this, the story that he's a, he was a wide receiver until like the last year of college. And he's yeah. like, look at him. Like when he gets in the open field, you can tell he's a receiver. He's going to be yep. so dangerous. Yeah, uh, cool. Derek Henry Dutton. Um, you got to trade him if you can. This is the time to sell. It, like, it, it, I mean, you, you're gonna, you're, you're. If you have him, you're using him to sure up all the injuries to wide receivers you might have, or a big injury to a quarterback you might have, or something else. But you're getting as much as you can for Derrick Henry right now, because I mean, I yeah, he's Derrick Henry. Hey. So I can I can totally get behind exactly what you're saying. He, his value will never be higher. He's the best running back in the NFL right now, and you should get a ton for him if you can sell him. However, for me, I think he's a hold just because he's in an excellent offense who wants to run the ball, and I think he's just going to continue to do what he's doing all year long. And if you sell him, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on that. So. 
we were talking about my trade in my dynasty league and I wound up rejecting the offer for the first round pick. And I'm going to tell you why, and this is why I'm trying to sell them. Uh, it's not just, we've been talking that the, the Derek Henry injury is coming, right? Like it, it has to come. It doesn't make sense what he's doing. He's like the, he really is like, like a machine. Like you're he's a with house money right now. Like you, 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 yeah. Like, you, you. but here's the thing. It's not just a Derrick Henry injury. It's a Lamar Jackson injury. If Lamar Jackson gets hurt and people don't have to focus on him taking off Derrick Henry ain't doing this. Yep. So there, and those are two injury prone guys, right? Like these are two guys the last couple of years, not big injuries, but we'll miss a game or two. Those a nagging, game or two. right. You miss a game or two. Yeah. Right. And, and so that that's why I'm selling. I think you've like Dutton said, you've gotten the most you can. Demario Douglas had a big week this week. Can't wait to talk about him a little later in the show. Demario Douglas, uh, Dutton, what are you doing with him? I mean, I don't know. Try to go after him, right? If people want him, I don't know. Why not at this point? Buy him if you can. B. Yeah, buy him. Uh, Drake May looked looked all right. Demario Douglas is going to be his number one receiver. Got to throw to somebody. Got to yeah. throw somebody. Buy him. Uh, yeah, I'm buying. Uh, uh, you know, hey, they they looked. I was going. We'll talk about Drake May later. So yeah, I'm buying. The it, it looks like Douglas is his favorite receiver. He looked at Hunter Henry a lot too. So maybe there's a there's a rebirth there for her okay this guy has been a total bum maybe we have <laughs> to give him the locks of the week maybe he said that it's not calvin ridley's locks of the week anymore but what are you doing with calvin ridley i wrote i'm just cutting him <laughs> like, i wrote dump him so i'm with you yeah, yeah. I, I, and i wrote sell so i think we're all in the same what's page. wrong with him what like is it will levis is it will levis and it's having the deandre Titans hopkins well, yeah it's gotta be yeah you have deandre hopkins and and Calvin Ridley and man Ridley has had what has he had a ten point game? I don't think he's had a ten point game this year. I don't think so. But that that Titans offense is is terrible. Yeah, like they're not good. Yeah, yeah. Alexander Madison speaking of not good. Uh, <laughs> Fee. Yeah, sell him. Done. Can you sub him in when they get to the red zone? Can you just like? <laughs> Pull a fly like oh they're on the three yard line. I'm putting Madison in right now because that's <laughs> what he's good for. No, yeah, I mean sell him if anybody wants him for red zone touchdowns. If you're in a league that you can hockey sub guys, then <laughs> trade for Alexander Madison. <laughs> so. See, I, I'm torn because to Dutton's point, he's the guy finds the end zone every week, so he's gonna get you points. And I feel like, in a sense, you're not holding him this because you're starting him every week, but you're holding him because he's that perfect guy that if injury strikes, at least you're putting in a guy that you know is going to get the end zone. You're going to get eight points. yards and a touchdown. Right. You're going to get <laughs> nine, eight, nine points. But in the same sense, because what if those touchdowns go away? Then he's garbage. He averages like 2.4 yards a carry, right? The guy's a, a truck. So um, maybe I'm, I'm also thinking maybe you sell him if people are looking for that depth to make a playoff run because – I don't know how if he he's so touchdown dependent that it's scary. Um, Travis Etienne, what's up with this guy? What are we doing, Dutton? You're just selling him. You're selling anybody on the pan. Uh, I must said the Panthers on the Jaguars because the Jaguars are going to start selling everybody on the Jaguars because they're going to start trading everybody. Yeah, they're just stuck in London, so they can't trade anyone because they probably can't we'll afford the plane everybody. ticket because of Tra Trevor Lawrence's contract. Right. <laughs> uh, fee. Yeah, he's constantly hurt, uh, and when he's not hurt, he has what seems to be thirty-seven other running backs behind him <laughs> that, are, that are that are ready to take over. Uh, and the Jaguars are bad, so just sell them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Isaiah, oh, I'm I'm selling as well. Yeah, I didn't say that, but I I I would never really draft him because of all the things that Fee said, the injury, and there's always another running back behind him. Uh, thirty-seven. Anyway, closing it out, Isaiah likely uh buy, hold, sell, fee. Uh I I I missed this one, but I think probably sell just because he hasn't done much lately. Andrews has been more involved. I think between between the two of them and whatever else, you know, and Zay Flowers and everything else they got going on there and running the ball a thousand times a game. Uh I think I I don't know. I think his time is coming gone. So I'd I'd sell him. Done. Uh, I wrote hold because I don't know what you do with a tight end in Baltimore. 
Like, I was ready to trade Mark Andrews, cut Mark Andrews, and all of a sudden Mark Andrews scores a touchdown at 60 yards last week, right? Like, yeah. So That's 60 week, yards two weeks in a row. I mean, Right. So this week it could be Isaiah Likely's week. Who knows? Just hold them onto your team and see what can happen. That's a fair point. I said sell too. I think it's it's the Mark Andrews show is back. I we were talking about that he could have been injured from that car crash and he just wasn't right to begin the year. And he's looked healthy the last two weeks. And how do you not throw the ball to Mark Andrews when he's healthy? Um, all right. That's the last of the the buy, sell, hold. Uh, that's a fun little I like that little part of the show. We'll keep doing it until uh the trade deadline hits in a couple weeks. But now it's time for locks of the week. Last week, what did we tell them? Uh, we told them to take uh, the Bucks, giving three and a half. That was Fee's pick, who is the best on the show. He moved to four and two, uh, and three. And, so the three and out pick hit. Uh, I told you that Steelers minus three, depending on what the hell the injury report was for the Raiders, everyone was out. So the Steelers obviously covered. And then I said, if not. I would take the Val- Falcons minus six versus the Panthers and both teams covered. So it didn't matter which one of my picks you went with. And then Dutton was a half point shy of us completing the trifecta. He said the Jets uh, getting two and a half and a, they lost by three, right? Right. Well, yeah. 23. Yep. 20. yep. So overall good week. Let's see if we can keep it rolling this week. Uh, Dutton, we'll go to you to redeem yourself. Who are you taking? I'm taking the Bengals minus five and a half against the Browns. I'm assuming after Sunday, um, the free anybody on the Cleveland Browns chance will start. That team is in disarray. Miles Garrett needs off that team in the worst oh, way. Oh, gosh. I'll take him on the Texans. Anybody would take him, right? So, yeah, I'm taking the Bengals. Speak. Uh I'm going to go... I, I know you're going to hate this, Wayne, but I'm going to go with the Bills minus eight and a half this week. Oh, They're wow. playing the Titans. We just, it is a lot. We just, but we just talked about how awful the Titans are. Um, and I just think that while the Bills have had a- almost all of their games very close, I think this is the game, especially now with Amari Cooper um, on the team. Uh, this is the game where they pull away. Uh, from the Titans who aren't going to be able to stay with them. I think they cover that cover that eight and a half this week. I want to have some fun. I, I, I don't think the Jaguars will be playing inspired football. Uh, and while I think they could score against the Patriots defense, I also think the Patriots see a chance to get Drake may, a, you know, t- a win, but like, this is a team they could beat Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson is the luckiest guy in the world because like I said, they don't have any money to fly him home. So that's the only reason he's not fired. He right. would have been fired, this guy right. should be fired by now. And uh he, he's gonna get left behind in Jolly of London. And I think the Pats win or at least lose by a field goal. But I think they're gonna come out and they're gonna play hard for Drake May uh and get the rook as his first win. Uh and they were getting five and a half. So as long, like I said, if they win lose by a field goal, we're still in there. Uh who do we want to lock in? I like the Cincinnati pick. Yeah, I'm okay. good with that. Yeah. The Bills is a lot of points. That worries me. Yeah, I, I I think the Titans. I think the Bills win by like five, and we we get screwed on that one. Seven. They win by like a touchdown. Yeah. All right. Time to move on to Fee's favorite part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. FanDuel Fee's stacks of the week. All right. So this week, this week is a is kind of a crazy one, and um, I went a little crazy here with my picks, um. And the reason is because all of the top name high salaried quarterbacks or the top name quarterbacks are all very high salaried this week. You got Josh Allen. He's in the 9K range. Hurts, Jordan Love. Like there's a just a ton of quarterbacks where you could kind of go any which way, but they're all, they all cost a ton of money. And so this week I wanted to pay down at quarterback where's where you can kind of pay up more for running backs receivers um and and the like and so this week you'll notice that i've stayed away from the high salary quarterbacks and i'm going with some crazy ones here uh that are low that are much much lower salaried to start us off i got sam darnold at 7500 against the lions uh, I know that you talked about how the Lions secondary is good. However, 
that pass rush just got destroyed with Aiden Hutchinson going down with a broken yeah. leg. Yeah. He was the only guy that got pressure on that defensive line, which is what was helping that secondary. And oh, very by true. the way, oh, by the way, the Vikings and Sam Darnold have been very good all year, if you haven't noticed. And I think that continues this week. At 7,500, you pair him with Justin Jefferson at 9,400, or you go with that Jordan Addison at 6,300, so you save three grand there. And then you come back with Amon Ross St. Brown because what's going to happen is the Vikings defense, who blitzes a thousand times a game, are going to try and get after Jared Goff, and he's going to have to get rid of the ball quickly, which nullifies Jamison Williams. You're not going to be able to throw the ball deep on on him i think he tar- targets amon ross st brown a, th- a ton this week so you, so you come back with amon ross st brown and uh and that's that's your stack this week maybe darnold addison and amon ra um stack number two is kirk cousins with atlanta against seattle um at 7200 you pair him with Drake London, who's only 7,500, and maybe Kyle Pitts at 5,900. Um, you could go, you could stack them both. You could stack all three of them. Um, I, I just like Atlanta this week against Seattle, at least their offense. And stack number three is if you really want to get crazy, you go with the red rifle, Andy Dalton at 7,300. So right around the same range as Cousins against Washington who has been horrendous against the pass. One of the worst teams giving up the most t- uh, passing touchdowns in the league. Um, you pair you pair Dalton with Xavier Leggett at 5,900, so you're saving a ton of money there. And you come back with one of my favorite plays this week is Terry McLaurin with Jaden Daniels, who's only 7,200. So, so either way, you know, you stack up, you stack up Dalton or you don't, I think you have to get Terry McLaurin in your lineup at 7,200. Um, Washington's offense is very good. Carolina, obviously not very good. And uh, Terry McLaurin and, and Jaden Daniels have, have really kind of gotten a good rapport together. So uh, Terry McLaurin to continue with his stellar play this year. And then a few one-offs for me this week. Um, if you're going to be paying up for wide receivers like uh, Justin Jefferson or Amon Ross St. Brown, you might not be able to get some of these guys in there, but really love AJ Brown this week against the giants really love Saquon Barkley this week against the giants, but they're going to both going to cost you AJ Brown's 8,900 Saquon's 9,000. So um, two of the higher priced guys on the slate. And then uh, Chase Brown at 6,500. He's been getting a ton of run. Uh, he's surpassed Zach Moss in touches. Um, and we just and we talked about uh, Cincinnati against Cleveland this week. And Austin Eckler uh, at 6,600 with Brian Robinson still out. Is, is Brian Robinson is definitely out? Uh, I, well, I don't know if definitely he is, but I, th- I don't think, think he practiced today. I think he yeah. was. And I again, think he's going Wednesday to... for new listeners. We always record on Wednesday nights. So your guesses on injury are as good as ours because everybody's questionable today. Right. Um, also, what is uh, what's his name? Too much money. Deontay Johnson. Is that why you went with Leggett? I'm curious. Uh, yeah. So here I'll, I'll pull him up. Uh, Deontay Johnson is. 7100. So yeah. Like Leg- Leggett is 59 so you're saving $1200. Deontay has a, a bit of an ankle tweak. Um yeah, I'm sure he would be fine. Um but the problem is is that I'm paying up in in yeah. For, yeah. For just so many other guys that trying to get another guy in there at a 7k range would be tough. You kind of got to you got to find places where you can pay down. Um so Xavier Leggett would be a, kind of a good spot for that. Uh, I think, especially in this game where Washington is is really bad on defense, and so is Carolina. This could be a shootout type of game. Um, you know, Terry McLaurin is seventy two hundred. I like him a lot better than Deontay Johnson this week. So, uh, I like it. I like it. Uh, how, how, hey, Wayne, how are you feeling about all those uh, those quarterback picks, Darnold Cousins and Andy Dalton? Uh, I love. Uh, I actually was put Andy Dalton into my super flex uh, as you were talking about it. And, you know, I love Cousins. I'm on the Cousins train. Darnold, it's just hard for me to trust him, but he's a must start. I think you got to start him, especially like you said, with the with Hutchinson out, that, that's a game changer. I like it. I like all three of those picks. 
uh, okay, let's move on to fourth down and where where it starts and sits. Uh, before we jump into it, the Bears and the Cowboys are on a bye. That means no Caleb Williams, who we were talking about before. Uh, Keenan Allen, no Cole Komet, no DJ Moore, no DeAndre Swift, no CD Lamb, no Turd Ferguson, and no Dak. Uh, can we still sit Dak? Can we just thanks? Thank God there's no Dak. <laughs> can we just sit him because he's Dak? Um, let's just oh no, let's go back and look at last week. Last week was a mixed bag. We literally got four right and four wrong. It was as mixed mm-hmm. bag as you get. Uh, we did not do well in the starts where we said to start cousins, start Pollard, who didn't hit, start DJ Moore, who got a touchdown, but that was it. Um, oh no, the touchdown got called back. He didn't even get the touchdown. And uh, Dalton Schultz, and and he also did not do well. So let's see what if we could do better this week on starts. Uh, Fee, who are you starting at quarterback? Of course you are. <laughs> I'm starting my boy Baker, baby, against Baltimore. They're not going to be able to run the ball, so it's Baker all day long. And by the way, Baltimore's pass defense has not been good. It's not as good as strong as a run. I told Dutton we have Jordan Love and Baker Mayfield, and I want to start Baker Mayfield this week. Uh, Dutton, who are you starting? I'm starting. I know this is going to sound crazy. Like, oh, of course, but he hasn't been very good this year. But I think this week is a big Patrick Mahomes week. So I'm starting Patrick Mahomes because he has yeah. not been good fantasy this year. No, he has not. Uh, I told you what I think in the locks of the week, and I'm starting Drake May this week. Look, here's the deal with Drake May, and, and I'm not, uh, you know, the Texans, I know I'm being biased, but this is true. The Texans have one of the most ferocious defensive fronts and, and like rush, you know, rushing the quarterback attacks in the NFL. You have like three of the best guys on your line. And May looked like a quarterback that had a bad day. What he didn't look like was a rookie getting flustered by one of the best, you know, attacks in football. So that was impressive to me. Um, and the Jacks have none of that. The J- don't have any defense to worry about. They don't have as strong as second any desire to even play or a desire <laughs> to play. They've they've allowed a ton of touchdowns uh, to the quarterback. I think Drake May is the guy that like. I think it's two seventy five and two touchdowns. I don't think he's going to light the world on fire, but that's good for a quarterback this year. Like that's his running ability either. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm going there. Who do we want to uh, lock in? I want to start Drake May because that's who I was going to start. But you already you had it there. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, Dutton was only going to start because you know he, he was played in his backyard. By, they're going to get destroyed by two rookie quarterbacks back-to-back weeks. Who's that? Oh, the Jaguars. Jaguars. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Caleb Williams lit him up, and now Drake Mason yeah. will light him up. <laughs> uh, and what's hilarious is the week before, they beat Joe Flacco, who's the oldest quarterback in the, <laughs> the NFL. <laughs> they have played every end of the spectrum in the last three weeks. Uh, let's move on. So Drake May it is. Let's move on to running back. Dutton, we'll start with you. Um, You said it before. Everybody's questionable because it's Wednesday. But if Najee Harris plays and he can turn the corner, like, uh, what's his name from? Who was that guy from the Bills who rushed for 150-something yards on Monday night? Ray exactly. Davis. Ray, Ray Davis. Davis. Yeah. Um, I, I expect Najee Harris to have a big game against the Jets running the ball. Hey. Uh, I am starting Tony Pollard this week against the Buffalo Bills. Um, Pollard is averaging 19 touches a game. Um, He's rushed for 80-plus yards in three out of his five games and has a touchdown in two straight games. Um, Buffalo has given up the second-most fantasy points per game uh, to running backs. Um, So start Tony Pollard this week. Uh, We talked about him before, so this is kind of funny, but – to Dutton's point, he's a touchdown machine, and the Rams have allowed the third most touchdowns to running backs this year. So I'm going with Alexander Madison because I'm almost guarantees the guy is going to find the end zone, especially since, again, it's Wednesday. But Z- Zamir White was once again limited today, so who knows if he's trending towards playing. Uh, so if he has the backfield to himself again, I just see a touchdown in his future. Uh, uh, who do you want to start? I can't decide. I think I'm leaning towards Pollard. He had a good week. I'd, last I, he did. I'd like to start Pollard. All right, we'll do it. Pollard it is. All right. 
Uh, wide receivers, I'll start. This is why I was asking, Fee. I know he is a little dinged up, but who isn't? It's uh, I, I'm going with Deontay Johnson. I just think Dalton does have a good game. Um, Washington, like we said, is just – you can shred them on passing game. It's crazy how – there's just nobody there. So I yep. think uh and I think Andy Dalton's good enough to find his favorite target of a plethora of times, Hefe. Uh go ahead, Fee. What do you think? Yeah, no, I so I like I like Deontay Johnson. Uh, you know, again, I, I do like this game, and I think that Deontay Johnson gets his as well. That's why I like Leggett also, um, just because I think the game script is gonna be good for both of those guys. Yeah. Um, because Washington's defense is so bad, but I'm, I talked about him earlier, but I'm talking, I'm starting Terry McLaurin. Um, he has four touchdowns and two 100 yard games this year. Um, and now he gets the Panthers who have allowed the third most touchdown catches to wide receivers and the sixth most fantasy points to wide receivers, uh, this year. So start Terry McLaurin. Done. I'm starting T. Higgins in what will most likely be his last game as a Bengal. You think? There are, there are reports out there that he is possibly being traded to the New England Patriots. The interesting. Patriots. Yes, which he is gets. interesting. Get Drake May a weapon all of a sudden? Yeah, but they're <laughs> one in five. Why are the Patriots buying? They should be selling anything. They have. No, because they're rebuilding. They should be buying. They're not dumping. Yeah, but isn't stuff. T. Higgins was only given the franchise tag? He's a free agent at the end of the year, right? I don't know. There's reports out there. Uh, I think so. That's anyway. Weird. That being said, I'm starting T. Higgins against the Browns because this is also the last game for many of the Cleveland Browns because they're going to be selling everybody. Yeah. Except Deshaun Watson because they're stuck with his contract. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Thank you for Will Anderson and the rest of the draft picks that we have gotten through Cleveland. Uh, who do we like here? I I think that the Carolina Washington game is going to be like thirty five yeah, to thirty, Terry so I would be Mac. good with either of those. It's T Mac. We got to go with Terry Mac. Come on, Fee yeah. picking Terry Mac. We got to go. <laughs> Not even an option. What am I even asking for? Right. Tight, tight end Fee, start us off. I'm going to start David and Joku against the Bengals this week. Uh, he's been getting a ton of volume. Deshaun Watson can get the ball out quickly to his tight end. And now that Amari Cooper's traded to Buffalo, there should be even more targets for him. Uh, and so um, he's he's looking more healthy than he has uh, coming off that ankle injury. So I'm going to start David and Joku this week. Dutton? Zach Ertz against the Panthers. You guys have talked about this game enough. And why not? Because there's got to be a tight end that scores. So Zach Ertz. Love it. Love it. I'm going with Hunter Henry because I'm going to take the Drake May double dip. He look, he got he had the second most targets on the team last week. He got in the end zone, one of the three touchdowns Drake May threw. I'm going with Hunter Henry. Um, so I like Ertz. I, yeah, I like Ertz. I want you guys to to remember the conversation we just had for when we get to the sits of the tight ends. Zach Ertz. Uh, I'll start any of these guys. You like Ertz? Yeah, that's good. I like Ertz. Let's lock in Ertz. So the three and out starts of the week are quarterback Drake May, Tony Pollard at running back, Terry Mack, of course, Terry McLaurin at wide receiver, and Zach Ertz at the tight end. Uh, since last week, we did very well. We told you to sit Kyler Murray. I told you to sit J.K. Dobbins. He actually found the end zone. Uh, I told uh, We said to sit Chris Olave and Dallas Goddard. Those were all hits. So let's keep the good times rolling down here. Dutton, quarterback, sit of the week, go. I'm sitting C.J. Stroud versus the Packers. Uh, that defense is on fire. They're playing in Lambeau Field. It doesn't mean that the Texans won't win this game because I think this game is actually going to be one of the best games of the weekend. But I just don't know if C.J. has a monster game fantasy-wise. So... Like, this could be, like, a 238-yard, two-touchdown game, which is yeah. huge. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Hey. I am sitting Brock Purdy this week against the Kansas City Chiefs, like uh, who, after Lamar Jackson went off on them week one, have not given up more than 18 fantasy points uh, to any other quarterback. Um, and they've held the quarterbacks to less than 13 fantasy points in three straight weeks. And, oh, by the way... Brock Purdy has not scored more than 15 fantasy points in four of his last six games. I like it. Gee, Marge, your hair sure is Purdy. Uh, I'm telling you, I feel like Geno Smith has been getting love from us to start the season, 
But I think that stops this week. I think the Falcons' defense is legit. Like, I'm not saying they're the best defense in football, but they're good, man. And I think that causes the ball, no pun intended. <laughs> they, yeah, I think it gives Geno Smith uh, some trouble this week, and uh, I would sit him because I know there's plenty of people starting him. I was one of them. So uh, what do we think here? I, I think Purdy. Pur- I like the Purdy sit. Yeah, he Purdy's brought, a lot. He brought the thunder with the stats. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> running back. Uh, uh well well <laughs> to start which one of you two wants to start done uh josh jacobs versus texans wayne talked about their front four and they're really good and josh jacobs is a good runner but front I don't seven think... give us credit where credit is due all right fine front seven whatever you can't stop That's the great. pass but you're really good at stopping the run and josh jacobs runs the ball those are all fair points <laughs> Duffy. i'm sitting josh jacobs <laughs> <laughs> Second Texans day, their their rush defense has been excellent this year. Sit Josh Jacobs. Uh, I'm sitting David Montgomery, and I'll tell you why. I like Montgomery. I think he has a decent game, but the Vikings are the stingiest against fantasy running backs this year, and this may be a game where they need the shiftier pass-catching uh, abilities of Gibbs over Montgomery. So I, I just think this is the Gibbs week and not the Montgomery week. Uh, but obviously we got to go with Jacobs because it's I'm already outvoted two to one. And of course, I'm going to be rooting against Josh Jacobs because I'm a Texans fan. So there you go. So it works well, out. Let's go. Wide receiver Josh Downs uh, is red hot and Joe Flacco's favorite target the last couple of weeks. But Richardson practiced today and they've already he said if, and if Richardson starts for the Colts, every one of these people take a hit. Like Michael Pittman goes back down. Josh Downs becomes Josh Downs again. Everybody. Uh, and the Dolphins thus far have been stingy against wide receivers in the end zone for fantasy. So I am sitting Josh Downs. Fee? I am sitting my New Orleans Saints receivers, no matter who they are. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think Olave plays this week with, the, with his concussion. Rashid Shaheed has been dinged up and hurt. Um, I don't know who the rest of those guys are, but sit all your New Orleans Saints. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and done. I'm sitting George Pickens against the Jets. Um, There's already quarterback. Who knows what's going on in Pittsburgh? And let's remember the Jets do have Sauce Gardner. So I'm sitting George Pickens. Yeah. Um, This is a tough one. Who do you want? I don't think – here's the thing. I don't think Shahid or – I really almost said Marquise Colson. I don't think (laughs) Shahid or Olave play. No, yeah, I don't think so either. So, yeah, you're so you're not going to start any of the backup, right? right. Like, so there are uh, Bub. What's the guy's name? Bub something that Bub, cut yeah, that he means, his first touchdown. Bub means. Bub means Bub means business, baby. So I don't they think you start any of those guys. So I think it's between Pickens and Josh Downs. Um. Yeah, sit downs because of stupid Richardson. I mean, I'm sorry. Sit downs. I mean, it sounds like you're ordering sit downs. Downs. <laughs> downs. <laughs> Teacher Dutton coming out right there. Sit down. Uh, tight end. Uh, Dutton, start with you. Uh, Tyler Conklin versus the Steelers. Um, I just think the Steelers' defense is really strong. Aaron Rodgers is going to have a hard time. Tyler Conklin is not going to be his hot read. The other side of that game, sit Pat Fryermuth <laughs> against the Jets. Um Fryermuth has had fewer than 25 yards in two straight games. Uh, there's a very low floor. The Jets' defense is very good. Stip, Fryermuth. So here's why I said to remember our conversation for the starts. I'm sitting Dalton Dick Kincaid, and I've already told you why. I, I fear the usage is going to – maybe not this week with Cooper, but it, something's weird. But to your points – in our league, in our fantasy football league that the three of us are in, I have Zach Ertz, Hunter Henry, and Dalton Kincaid. And all I could tell you right now is I'm not starting Dalton Kincaid, and I'm starting one of those two. Like <laughs> So there was already the conversation I had in my head before there this show had started, and that confirms everything I'm saying. So that's why, that's why I'm sitting Dalton Kincaid, because I'm literally sitting Dalton Kincaid with two options that we have discussed that's previously the on the show. So who's our sit? Dalton Kincaid. It's got to be. Hey, Kincaid it is. <laughs> uh, this, this So three and out sits are Brock Purdy at quarterback, Josh Jacobs at running back, Downs at Josh Downs at uh, – it's a bad week for Josh's. 
Josh Downs at wide receiver and Dalton Kincaid at tight end. Gentlemen, before we go, anything to add to our 101st episode? No. no. Crazy. 101 <laughs> episodes in, you guys are still the greatest closers in, in sports entertainment. Uh, anyway, leave us a comment, give us a like. We'll see you next week on 3 and Out.